Hi, today I want to show you how you can use IO control in a Linux PCI driver for our PCI QMU echo device. So till now we have multiple ways to access bar one which contains four kilobytes of memory. So we can access it over memory map or over the read and write callback of our device file operations. But we also have bar zero with some functionality in it and currently we don't have any way to access um, these functionalities and I want to do this with IO control. So IO control is basically used for functionality you can't cover with read and write callbacks or for example for sending driver specific commands um, or configurations for a driver. I've already did a video on IO control in more details. I will put a link to the description so you can check it out if you want. But today I will do a simple IO control implementation for our PCI Echo device driver. So the first thing I will do is I will navigate into the Git repository I have for the series of videos. So here we are. And the first thing is I will open up the PCI Echo device. So this is a source file of our QMU PCI Echo device. You can see here in this device struct we have two bars, bar 0 and bar 1. Bar 0 is 64 bytes in size, bar 1 is 4 kilobytes in size. And up here you can see the meaning of the different registers of bar 0. So at offset 0 we have a 32-bit register called ID register, which will contain a unique ID. Then the, at offset 4 we have another 32-bit register I've called invert register. So this register, if you write a value to it, will invert this value for you. The IRQ register will is for future use when we are talking how to add interrupts to this QMU echo device. And we have a random value register which will return a random value on, on any read. So and the another four registers here are for the DMA. I've covered this in my last video. If you're interested in this, check this out. But what I want to do is I want to add IO controls to access the ID register, the invert pattern register, and the random value register. Okay, so first we need to define some IO control commands. And therefore I will um, add the file um, echo device command.h, which I already did. And this is just a simple header file containing um, or defining yeah, um, some defines which are the command values. So with IO control you always are sending a command and here I'm defining the command. So I have get ID for reading out the ID, get random and get invert to read out the specific registers and set invert to write the invert register. Okay, and now let me jump to the driver. And in here, you can see I have a device struct containing the data for my device. Then I have the callback function for reading and writing to my device file. And I have a callback for the memory map. And here I have bundled the file operations in the struct file operations. Currently I'm supporting the um, read, the write, and the memory map. And now I want to add a new callback from the type with the return value long integer. I will call it echo IO control and it has the following arguments. The first one is a pointer from the type struct file pointing to the currently opened file. Then I have the IO control command stored in this command variable. And IO control can have optional arguments, and if so, these are stored in a pointer behind this arg address here. And typically, what you're doing with IO control is you have a switch case statement, and here you are parsing for your um, defined commands. And in case the paste command is does is not in this list, you will return error invalid to signalize to the user space the pause command is invalid. And here I will add some cases containing our different IO control cases. But first I have to include um, our file with the IO control commands. The cool thing is if you are separating this into a .h file you can also use it for your 
user space application. This is why I did this this way. So echo device minus command dot h. And in my previous video on IO control, I used a different way to define these commands. You can check it, them out in the video. Okay, so the first case is get ID. Therefore, I need some variables. So the first variable um, is just for convenience for me. And then I need a 32-bit unset integer I will call value in which I will, yeah, read in the value. So if I want to get the ID, what I have to do is I have to call IO read 32. And I want to read from bar zero plus offset zero, and that's it. And then I will do a return, and then I have to, I have stored the ID registers value in this value variable, and now I have to copy this to user space. And I can do so with the function copy to user. So the first argument is the destination. Therefore, I have to type this address to unsigned integer 32 pointer. So my source is the value and I want to copy size of the value variable and that's it. And I can copy this two times and implement the um, get inf IO control and I just have to change this offset here and also the get rand IO control. Once again, I have to change the offset. Okay, now only the set invert case is a little bit different. So let's take a look at it, what we have to do here. So this time we have to copy the data from the user space to the kernel space. And we can do this with copy from user. Once again, the first argument is the destination. The second argument is the source. And the last argument is the amount of bytes which, which we should copy. And in case this is not equal to zero, I will return fault. So we know something unintended or bad happened. And then I can do the IO write 32. I want to write to bar one of our device plus an offset of four. And the value I want to write is stored in my value um, variable. And if this worked, I can return zero. Okay, so much for the O control. Now the only thing which is left to do for me is I have to add the callback for IO control in my file operation struct. Okay, and now we should be done and I can try to compile my kernel module. The target architecture is ARM and this is a cross compiler I want to use. So let's see if this works or if I made some mistakes. Uh, yes, I forgot the brace. I think I forgot the brace, maybe even two. So, yes, I just forgot a brace here. Good, now let's try to compile it again. Yeah, now it's looking good. We have compiled our yeah, driver for our PCI Echo device. Now the next step is to write a user space application to use IO control with. And we can do so. Um, so I will write a new application I will call bar zero test.c. And first I need to include some header files. So I need standard io.h. I will need standard integer. I will need string maybe. I will need function control and I will include sys slash io control to have the io control callback available. And of course I have to include echo dev command.h to have access to the defined um, commands. Then I will need a main function and I want to pass, pass in some arguments to this main function. And in case everything worked, I will return zero. Okay, so how should the arguments look like? So the first argument will be the device file it should be using. The second argument is the command. And if I want to have optional arguments, it will be stored in the third argument. So I will check if the argument count is not equal to three or argument count or and, I think and, and argument count is 
is not equal to four. And in this case, we have a wrong usage. So I will print out how to use this program. So the first argument is the device file. The second one is, um, is the command. And the last one is optional. And these are the arguments. For example, if I execute the set um, inf command, I can pass in the value I want to write to it. Okay, and let's return zero here. Good, then I need some arguments. So I need a file descriptor and I also need uint32t, a value where I can store my values. So the next step is I have to open up my device file and this is stored in arg in argument number one. And I want to read with read and write permissions. And in case if D is smaller than zero, an error occurred. And I will return the error code as well. And at the end I have to close the file. Okay, so now I have to check which um, command I have passed. So therefore I will use string compare and in case the second argument is equal to get ID, we will execute the get ID callback. And this must be equal to zero, then these strings are matching. Okay, and in case we have a match here, let me even add a status register here. So the status is IO control, um, my file descriptor, then the command, which is get ID, and last but not least, the optional argument. This will be appointed to my value variable here, and then I will print out the result. So IO control returned um, ID register. I will print out the status and the value. And that's it. Okay, but now of course I have to implement the same thing for various, for the other uh, IO controls. So in case it's get um, invert, inverse pattern register, And I have to do the same thing for ah, um, get trend random value register. Okay. And the last case is in case um, the command is equal to set inf, we will use this callback here, so and now this time I have to convert um, argument number three and I can use um, string 2L for this case. So the argument should be um, first the string which contains our, um, yeah, the value we want to cast and then I need two zeros. And then I can use IO control set inf and I will pass in my value and return. Yeah, and here I just will print out what IO control returned. I don't need to print out the value again. Okay, and in case the argument is none of the three here, I can print out is not a valid command. Okay, so that should be about it. Let me try to compile this program. Therefore, I need my cross compiler. Uh, yeah, the first slash I shouldn't delete. Okay, so my input file is bar zero test and my output file I will directly place into my root file system here and I will name it bar zero test. Uh, function control, yes, I think I have a typo here. Um, 
yeah and string too long string two. yes and for these two functions i need standard lib i think or uni std Yes, unisd.h. Sorry, I'm a little bit too fast today. <laughs> yes, now it, it compiled correctly. Then I can copy my echodev driver ko file also into my root file system. Then I will navigate into my root file system and pack it. And then we can try everything out. Cool. So for trying it out, I need to navigate into my qmu build. And then I will fire up my virtual machine. So this is a kernel, a root file system, and I will add my PC echo device here. So this will boot up in a second. Here you can see bar zero test and my kernel module. So first let's load the kernel module and let's create the device file. Okay. And now if I'm doing a bar zero test without arguments, I will get the usage. And if I use it with the get ID, yeah, it read out the ID and we can see here it actually accessed our bar, then get um, rand also works and I will get a random value every time I call it. Then I will use set in. Okay, so the write was done. And now if I'm doing a get in, I should get back the, re, um, the inverted value. Okay, cool. That's how to use IO control with our QMU um, PCI echo device. So I guess that's it for today. I hope you've enjoyed the video and learned something. In case you want to support my work, you can buy me a coffee on buymeacoffee.com slash for Linux. So thank you for watching and goodbye.